The state of Pennsylvania was founded by Quaker William Penn in 1682 as a sanctuary for religious freedom. Many Quakers have lived and worshipped in Philadelphia ever since. Next, on American History TV's American Artifacts, a visit to Arch Street Meeting House, constructed in 1804, to learn the story of Philadelphia's Society of Friends and to learn about the history and practices of Quakers. Welcome to Arch Street Meeting House. My name is Lynn Calamia and I'm the director here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the building we're standing in, Arch Street Meeting House, which is a Quaker place of worship, and also a little bit about Quakers. At the beginning of our tours that we normally do with visitors and school groups, we have them look around this space. Um, we do a lot of comparing this site to other religious sites that people are used to visiting because it is sort of outside of um, the norm. And we have people look around and then let us know what's different here versus other historic religious sites or just religious sites that they've been to. And a lot of times they notice there aren't stained glass windows or um, large golden candles or even a place for a priest or deacon to stand and give a sermon or, or something like that. And that's because Quakers worship in a way that's different than most folks do. Um, it is a Christian religion. And uh, so on a typical Sunday, the, this is still a, an act of congregation meets here for worship. And what happens now and what happened 200 years ago, it's pretty similar out here in Philadelphia. So people gather and they sit in silence for an hour. Historically, people would gather in this space, and, and that would be Quakers that you've heard of from history, such as Susan B. Anthony and William Penn and Lucretia Mott. They would meet in buildings similar to this, and they would sit in silence for an hour. If anybody in the group or, or in the congregation felt the, the desire to stand up and share a message, if they felt moved to speak, they could rise from in the silence and share what they had to share. And a question that we get often is, you know, what would the Quakers have said during worship? And we like to throw it back to history because it's easier in a site like this where we say, you know, Susan B. Anthony, when she had a message, it probably related to women's rights and women's suffrage because that's what she was fighting for the most. That was on her mind. Lucretia Mott, she spoke out a lot. We have um, records of some of her um, some of the sermons and talks that she was giving during worship, and they relate to abolition and urging other Quakers to feel the same way she did about freeing uh, slaves. Sometimes you may hear Quakers referred to as friends, usually with a capital F, and that's because the formal name is actually the Religious Society of Friends. Um, and the Religious Society of Friends was formed in England in the 1650s, by uh, a number of people, but prominently um, George Fox was his name. Um, and these thought leaders back in England were sort of, um, they, they didn't agree with the, the English church and they, all the stuff we talked about today about simplicity and plainness, the, the church then was sort of in complete and total opposition of that. They, things were fancy, it wasn't all about worship, and the Quakers really wanted to pare that down and to only do the things that they felt was um, was useful, the things that were connecting them better to God, and they wanted to remove all of the artifice and maybe the, uh, just to say, the, the middlemen. Um, they thought that they could communicate directly with God, um, and they saw everything else as being superfluous. A lot of the early Quaker leaders were actually jailed for their beliefs. If they were on street corners preaching, um, they could be thrown in prison for speaking out the way that they were about their Quaker beliefs. The persecution that they faced in England was one of the main reasons they started to come to America. And they founded, they originally lived in the um, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. And it's, it's another reason why William Penn was so motivated to come and to start the colony of Pennsylvania to get away from the persecution that was going on in Europe at the time. <laughs> 